Hey guys, it's Alex, and today I'm here with a book review for Penance by Kane Minato. This is a Japanese mystery kind of thriller novel about four women whose friend was killed when they were ten. A strange man walked up to them, told them he was a maintenance worker who needed help, and they allowed him to walk off with their friend. Hours later, they went off looking for their friend and found that she had been assaulted and murdered. This book takes place 15 years later when the women are 25. They're now dealing with the repercussions of this trauma over the past 15 years. It's affected their lives in many different ways, and now they're kind of reflecting on where they are and how they got here. I said almost thriller because although this book is marketed and described as a thriller, I don't think it really is one. I don't think that's really a good way to go into this book with those expectations because I think it will be a letdown. If you read this and you're looking for a thriller, this book isn't really a thriller. This book is a very deep introspective book. It's about the repercussions of trauma. It's how this one traumatic event in their lives has affected them for 15 years. It's about how their lives have changed and how they've become different people because of this one event. It's a really interesting study on the psychology of trauma, but it's not really a thriller. So I do think that's important to know going in, but I gave this book four stars. I really enjoyed this. I think Confessions, her other book, is supposed to be just as good, maybe even better than this, so I'm very excited to pick up that. But on its own, I think this book was definitely worth the read if it's something you're interested in. I found the story in this really compelling. I was just enthralled the whole way through. I wanted to figure out what happened when they were kids, what was happening when they were adults, like each of these women's lives. I just wanted to know everything. I wanted the full picture and I was just engrossed. Like this entire book, I didn't want to put it down. I think I read it in about two days. I was buddy reading this with Cozy Reader Kelly and I just kind of flew past her in the bunny read because I, I couldn't put it down. I didn't want to stop. I, I needed to figure out everything that was going on. And it wasn't like a plot twist kind of book. Like the ending of this book is very obvious in regards to like the whodunit aspect. And that's again part of the reason why I don't think this would be good as a thriller. But it's very fascinating if you look at it for what it is. You know who killed the girl. Like, that's something you find out. Like, halfway through the book, you know. You know his name. You don't know anything about him, but you know who he is. It's just like, I love the intricacies of these women's lives. I love what's happened to them over the last 15 years. I love the women they've become and how it's a reflection of this trauma that happened and the different ways that they all dealt with it. I found it so, so fascinating. The resolution to me didn't matter so much as just like, all these characters and their personal stories. Like there are five different narrators in this book and each one of them drew me in entirely. Each one of them I found so equally fascinating. I liked them different amounts. There were some people that I didn't like as much as I liked others, but as narrators in a story I found them all equally engrossing and equally entertaining to listen to. Which for me is really hard to do when it comes to multiple perspective novels. I do want to say that the storytelling structure is a little bit odd. Each one of the girls is speaking directly to the mother of the girl who was killed. The first is doing it in a letter, and the letter, it just literally starts Dear Asako, and the whole letter is just addressed to the mother of this child who was killed. The second chapter is in a PTA meeting. One of the girls, who is now grown up and is a teacher herself, is holding a PTA meeting, and at that meeting, she's speaking directly to the mother of the child who was killed. And the chapters go on, each of them doing it in a different way. And I do think that felt very awkward and forced. It didn't flow naturally as a story, but I was just so invested overall in like what was happening in these characters. And the way they were revealing this information was really well done and fascinating. That honestly, that didn't bother me too much. Normally, that's the kind of thing that really irks me in a story and will start dropping something down to two or three stars, like minimum. But I don't know, in this one it, it really didn't bug me that much. It was a slight irritation, but I would just like forget that as I was reading the story that it was so compelling overall that that didn't matter that much to me. So I do think that's kind of like a, a negative, but also kind of a plus. Like normally if someone says that in a book, I'm like, oh, that sounds irritating. That sounds like the most frustrating reading experience. And this wasn't, like it was a little weird, it was a little stilted, but in each chapter I kind of got into it and it felt more natural, but it did feel very weird whenever it was like reminded that they were addressing that woman specifically. Not huge, I still wasn't a huge fan of it, I think there was a better way to tell this story, but it was still 
interesting and I don't know that should have bothered me more than it did but the rest of the story was just so good that it didn't matter as much. And continuing on to the mother's character, I loved her role in this story. I didn't like the necessary storytelling structure of it, but I loved her overall role and the dynamic she brought. Because honestly, the crux of this story, where everything started, like the events started unfolding, wasn't the murder itself. When the girls were 13, three years after Emily had been murdered, the mother brought them all together and was like, you let this man take my daughter, it's your fault. You either have to figure out who this man is so he can be brought to justice, or you must do some kind of penance. And each of the girls have lived with that for the rest of their lives. And obviously, as an adult, like, that's not something that would affect you that much. But as children, children who have just been through this trauma, like, that's a very horrible thing to say to a child. And it was interesting the way it was dealt with in the story. I loved the dynamic that the mother brought to the story. I think she was the one that really made everything come together. And I just, I adored it so, so much. It was a really well done element, like both the mother and the threats that she made. And I loved the way the story dealt with it and like the dynamic it brought and everyone's different perspectives on it. Cause some of the characters were like, I have worked my whole life to do penance. And other characters are like, you're a horrible person for saying that to children. And it was just like really interesting how that impacted every single character in this book, but in different ways. So definitely, definitely a fascinating thing. The last point that I wanted to make comes from a review on the back of this book that is actually for confessions and not for this, but I do feel like it illustrates a point really well. And in it, it says, Minato's intricate plotting and unnervingly understated sentences make the horrors follow each other as logically as pearls on a string. I really, really enjoyed that because I feel like that illustrates so well what I was feeling for this book. Because it's not that there aren't thriller elements in this. There's a lot of murder in this book. There's a lot of horrific things that's ha that happen. There's a lot of rape. There's just a lot of really, really terrible things going on. But it feels so normal. Like, the way she writes it, it just flows very naturally. Like, any other book, I feel like this would have felt melodramatic. But in this, it just felt normal. It felt day-to-day. -day. It was like, okay, another murder happened. Someone got stabbed in the face. Like that's normal. It really, it really felt like almost mundane and it, like mundane in this horrifying way. And I really, really enjoyed that. I think it was her writing style that really made me buy into this world. And I didn't have any like disbelief for this story. I completely bought into it. And I really think it was because of the way she wrote it and because of the way that she normalized all these traumatic events. And I just, I really loved it. I would, I would highly recommend this book if it sounds interesting to you. I think if you're looking for a typical thriller, this is definitely not that. But I had to like kind of adjust my expectations going in because the first 10 or 15 pages I was like, what is this? This is not what I wanted. But once I realized what it was and kind of just like adjusted my perception of the book, I really thoroughly enjoyed it. It's a very reflective book. There's a lot of introspection. It's just the characters talking for the most part and telling their stories. So if that sounds like something that interests you, I would highly, highly recommend this. I thought it was wonderful. I think Kelly really enjoyed it too. I think she might have liked Confessions more. She found this very predictable, which I, I do agree. I wish it hadn't been quite so painfully predictable, but it didn't wind up mattering for me because I love this and I will definitely be reading Confessions at some point. Let me know down below if you've read Penance and what you thought of it if you have. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see y'all again soon.